Hello and welcome live to Facebook, uh, Bias for Two on Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Jozan Haren and I'm an assistant research professor here at Bias for Two. And I'm right here in the middle of our rainforest, which is a 0.2 hectare or it's about 200 by 200 feet rainforest that actually encloses a lot of different plants from tropical forests around the world. And like I say, uh, it's enclosing. There is a big, and you can't see that in this shot, but there is glass and steel frame that's enclosing this rainforest. And that gives us scientists a, a very big advantage in, in way that we actually can do things in this rainforest that are very difficult to do in the real world. And so that's why we learned this rainforest to, this help rainforest us understand to better what might happen, might happen to, to rainforest in the, pla on the planet. On the planet. In the future. Now, sure. now, now I wonder why, why would we I wonder care, why would we why care about that? Why would we worry about worry about forest? tropical I forest? Live here, I live here in the United States. States. Bias for two, two is in Arizona. It's a desert. It's a desert. Why, why would we care about that? that? One, of, One the of the key things about, about tropical forests is, is that they are actually the most active biomes that we have on the planet. So these ecosystems they cycle nutrients, carbon, oxygen, and other gases very fast, rapidly through their system. And as such, they have a very strong influence on the globe as well as a whole. And there are some modelers from both the University of Arizona and other universities as well that actually have done some modeling experiments where they cut out the whole rainforest in, in the Amazon basin and what that would do to the global climate. And it would affect the climate here in Arizona as well as on, in other places around the globe. So the rainforest besides for climate they're vitally important for all kinds of reasons, medications and so forth. But that's not what I'm gonna talk about right now. Today, I'm gonna focus really about climate change because that's what I do here and that's what most of our uh, research experiments have focused on in the past. And so, what, what do we look at with climate change? So the main things that we know that are gonna impact the tropical forests in the near future are temperature, so increasing the temperature. And that temperature increase is partly driven by an increase in carbon dioxide. So how does that going to impact the, the tropical forest? And then lastly, because of that interaction between temperature, global interactions and so forth, it also drought is greatly impacted. So actually the amount of rain that's gonna happen in the tropics is gonna change very much at, by, in, uh, in the future. How, we don't really, uh, perfectly understand but we know that there are changes going to happen so we want to get a heads up and get started on that work and that's what we can do here at Bias V2 because there's no place in, in on earth where you can say okay we're not going to rain on this forest for a month two months three months here at Bias V2 we actually have that capability to shut off the rain and have no water at least from above come into the forest and then see how they change the cycling of water. And we found some very interesting things. So one is that tropical forests are very, actually quite resilient to drought. Uh, these trees have uh, undergone a drought that was two and a half months, so 78 days of no rainfall whatsoever. And they did fine. We saw a little bit of stress here and there, but nothing that you would say they, they were really doing badly. Other thing is that different trees respond very differently. So there are certain trees that immediately will shut down uh, and, and drop their bottom leaves as soon as the drought starts. So that seems to be a signal that comes from the surface roots that see a drying out of the soil and then they immediately respond to that. Other trees, they slowly over time, what they do is they clo close the pores at the top of the trees in their leaves. And the pores are called somata. That's where they take normally in the carbon dioxide in uh, but also that's where the trees lose their water. So the water that they bring up from the soil goes all the way through the stem, up to the top of the tree, through the leaves, and then out into the atmosphere. So the drier, the less rain it is, the drier the atmosphere becomes, the more water the trees will lose. And so what we found is that certain trees will start to close those pores, those tomato, to keep the water in more, and so that they don't lose as much water. Other trees, they just behave like nothing has happened. Even after two and a half months, or so 78 days of no rain, these trees just behave like, well, it's, I got water, I'm fine. So 
if you're dialing in right now, my name is Joost van Haarn. We are in Biosphere 2 Rainforest and I'm talking about what we learn here about how tropical forests respond to climate change and what kind of a unique experiments can we do here at Biosphere 2 that you cannot do anywhere else. So another thing that we can do uniquely here at Biosphere 2 is we can change the amount of carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere. It's a small amount of atmosphere relative to the amount of uh, the plants that are in here, so the amount of biology. So whatever the biology does, it is much stronger reflected in the atmosphere, but it also gives us a chance to change that atmosphere much more rapidly. And for instance, one example of that uh, is that here you, in a sunny afternoon, especially in the summertime, you walk into this rainforest and if you come and visit, you should open up your nose. The first thing you do is you use your nose as your first sense coming into this rainforest because you will actually smell this sweet metallic smell, which is a gas called isoprene. And trees use this to actually uh, reduce the amount of temperature stress they have in their leaves. Now, what does that tell us about that this is a small atmosphere to the amount of biology? We only smell this really at very high concentrations concentrations that are well above what the normal atmosphere has. So you would never smell this anywhere on Earth, but here at Biosphere 2, because of the small amount of atmosphere relative to the amount of biology, you can smell it. So what we've done with experiments is to actually change the carbon dioxide concentration. And for periods, short-term periods, uh, for three days on end, we change the concentration to different levels. Ones that we've had 20, 30 years ago, all the way up to what we expect in about 100, 150 years from now. And what we see is that this rainforest will take up more carbon dioxide as the co carbon dioxide concentration increases. And that's no surprise. Carbon dioxide is plant food. And so with that, you give it more food, the trees will grow more. However, uh, beyond a certain level, which is we are expected right now to reach ar around about 75 to 80 years from now, they don't need more carbon dioxide. So what is happening then is that they would need other nutrients. So this suggests that there is a limitation of time that, that the plants, the forest ecosystems will help with taking up carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere through their photosynthesis. So lastly, I want to come back a little bit to this temperature aspect because Biosphere 2 is a greenhouse. And a greenhouse, what does it do? It actually heats up. And so we have elaborate cooling systems uh, to cool down. And if you would do a behind the scenes tour here, you would actually go down in the belly. You would see those kind of, ap that kind of apparatus that keeps the biology alive here. But one of the key things is that what we found is that you, we, the whole population seems to shift. So there seems to be an effect temperatures of pressure on the plants, that certain plants can survive higher temperatures while other plants can't. And lo and behold, and coming back to that iso gas isoprene, it's actually a lot of the plants that emit that gas isoprene that are able to survive under these conditions. Another thing is that we found is that th the plants can very rapidly adapt to higher temperatures. And so if you think about it, right, normally a tree grows up through the canopy and then becomes like a, a, a top of the canopy species. Well, in that rise, in that growth of the tree to higher, higher levels in the canopy, they're going to see less shade, they're going to have also see higher temperatures as well. So n trees in, in the real world have to be able to adapt to it. But what we've seen here at Biosphere 2, because we have seasonal cycles and so forth, that literally the leaves can change over a period of time of on the order of three to six months. And so they very rapidly can respond to that. That, the other thing is that temperature, they can photosynthesize, so they can take up carbon dioxide at much higher temperatures than the models thought that people had developed for the real world. So that has changed our way of thinking a little bit about how do we include photosynthesis in the way that we make predictions about the f r tropical forest responses to climate change. So those are com a couple of the main things that we have been working on here at Biosphere 2. And for instance, next Saturday, there is, I will give a behind the scenes tour. So anybody who is interested in has questions for me beyond what you can ask here potentially on Facebook Live, 
uh, I'm more than willing to answer those to you at that point in time. Should we answer right now a question, if there is one? So Susan had a great question. Um, she asked whether being enclosed in Biosphere 2, whether that's going to change the uh, results and how do we compensate for that? Fantastic question, Susan, and you're right on it. And, and with, in science experimentation, we always have to be very cognizant of these kind of issues. What does the experimentation, how does that affect how we find things? So the way that we see, for instance, that are, there are some effects, one is that the trees uh, ha are limited in, in their growth, where they can go. Uh, the trees, the way that um, they build in st up strength because we don't have wind that normally they would have in the real world. So there's a couple of things that are going on that are affecting it. There is new UV light, so how that impacts the chemistry in the leaves. Those are the kind of things where there can be some changes. And so we are very aware of that. And so therefore, we, what we find here, we don't say then directly, okay, this is how tropical forests behave and respond to that. We use an intermediary through the model. So B Biosphere 2 itself is a model system and we only really use it to inform the model systems uh, that we use to make predictions in, in, in the future. That's one. The other thing is as a way of a magnifying glass. Because there's so little amount of atmosphere relative to the amount of biology, the response of the biology to the atmosphere is so much faster. So we can use Biosphere 2 as a magnifying glass to look for certain things, look for certain responses, and then go to the real world. And then see, can we find those as well in the real world? So our adaption is, in short, we don't directly what we find at Biosphere 2 say, and this is how it's happening in the Amazon Basin. No, we use an intermediary and a filter, sort of as a model one and then two as using Biosphere 2 as a testing ground, fleshing out ideas and then really see how that happens in the real world. Cool, right? Thank you very much. See you all hopefully soon at Biosphere 2.